Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you're a fan of Batman, DCU, and a whole lot of things, hit that subscribe button because we talk about it all the time here on this channel. Thanks so much for joining me today and spending some time with me talking about Batman, the Batman Part 2, and possible villains for the Matt Reeves film. We know the script hasn't been complete. There was rumors that it was submitted in September, but now we're all the way in December and James Gunn is saying it's not done. My speculation is that it was sort of complete and now they're doing some rewrites on it. They haven't quite figured it out. Maybe they're punching it up a little bit, but I think the villain is completely 100% set in this movie. What I loved about the first Batman was the utilization of the Riddler, Penguin, Joker, and Catwoman also Carmine Falcone, and there were so many villains, right? They were placed in that movie that I was like, oh, you found a way to utilize multiple villains at once without having the stereotypical, like, let's team up together and take down the Batman that we used to get all the time in the 90s. I thought they did a really great job, and I'm hoping they continue with that in the sequel. Now, whether they continue it with Penguin, Catwoman, Riddler, Joker, I, you know, remains to be seen, but... Who could we see introduced in this movie? Because obviously they're going to have to introduce a new villain or new villains, multiple possibly, in the Batman 2. I will say right off the bat, I will not be discussing the Court of Owls. I've done videos on that in the channel. I'll do some more in the future. I think we're heading towards the Court of Owls. Whether we get them in 2 or 3, I'm not 100% sure yet. That's where I think we're going. So I do think we're going to get Court of Owls, but that's not who I want to talk about in this video. I want to talk about other villains, smaller villains that could play a big part in the movie, a potential threat to Batman, but something that could turn him off the trail of the ultimate villain that could be Court of Owls, or maybe it's back to being Riddler. Who knows what it is, right? So that's what I want to discuss. If Penguin is, let's say, the big bad, he's in five or six scenes, but let's say Penguin is the big bad, who is the Penguin to Penguin's Riddler in the first Batman movie? Who is the Catwoman to those characters in the first one, right? Is there someone in Arkham Asylum and behind the scenes like Joker in this movie also? So that's what I want to talk about is these other characters that could be established, that could be brought into the universe through the Batman Part 2, but not the Court of Owls because I think they're coming. I've said it before. I'll say it again. We'll hold that for another day. Also, if you haven't checked out Holy Christmas Batman from my friend Brian Royer, link in the description below. It is a jolly good time. But today I want to talk about these characters. So right off the bat, let's just start with this guy right here. His name is Professor Pig. I did a video a little while ago about villains I wanted to see get the penguin treatment on HBO Max. But I didn't mention Professor Pig. I wanted to hold him out for this video here because I would love to see him in the Batman Part 2. I think his personality, his character traits would work well in the Batman universe, in this grounded world of Batman and the way Batman could search for someone like this. While there's a bigger lingering threat going on throughout Gotham, he could have to worry about Professor Pig. He's a psychotic surgeon who performs grotesque experiments on his victims. Professor Pig could introduce a, a chilling serial killer subplot. His methods would align with Reed's penchant for horror and detective elements. He could push Batman into a darker, more disturbing investigation while maintaining the grounded tone of the series. Kind of what Riddler was doing in the first movie. You can use Professor Pig as that. But like I said, you have a bigger, larger threat at play. And Professor Pig is a thorn in Batman's side as we progress let's get on to a bigger villain now someone that i thought might be named like mentioned name dropped in the penguin series was not leading me to believe that we might not be getting this character whatsoever but i still think this one works perfectly in the reeves verse and would love to see him portrayed in a live action film one of batman's oldest villains we're talking about hugo strange Hugo Strange is a manipulative psychologist obsessed with uncovering Batman's identity. He could be cerebral antagonist perfect for the Reeves psychological noir style. He might even run Arkham Asylum, introducing characters like the Joker or setting up villains for future films. He could also be our gateway into meeting up with Sofia Gigante in this movie. He's a villain who challenges Batman intellectually while exploring themes of identity and obsession. You have a young Batman in year two of being Batman with someone obsessed with discovering his identity. That would be traumatizing for Batman, how he could cope with that, with all the other elements around him that is going on. I think Hugo Strange is a perfect fit for the Batman part two. The next one is a no-brainer to me, someone that I think a lot of people are hoping will be in the Batman Part 2, someone that might even get the max treatment of series, and that's Harvey Dent slash Two-Face. Now, I'm not 100% sure if we would get Two-Face in this world, but to be a villain, he's got to be Two-Face. So I'm going to go with Two-Face in this one. The one reason why I would actually be probably 
opposed to this happening, not opposed to what happening, but why I wouldn't think it would happen, is because he was used in the Caped Crusader animated show in the summer, which was produced by Matt Reeves. And, you know, he went on to say that they used characters, villains in that series that they couldn't bring into the Reeves verse because it didn't fit into the grounded nature of that show. And so Two Face was used in there, and I thought he was wonderfully in there. I like the way they flipped him around a little bit. I was damaged half was actually the logical half, and the and the, and the safe, clean, protected side was actually the psychotic side of Two Face. I really liked that angle that they did with him. So maybe that's how they get around, kind of like how they had Penguin be a female in that show, and Penguin obviously is confident on the male and, and the Reeves verse. So maybe they do it. That's how they do it. They're like they flip the face so they can make it work. But he had a big role in that, right? He had a big he had an arc, that full character arc. I think he could work wonders. In this as well, especially with Penguin. If Penguin's your gateway into the Batman Part 2, Two-Face could be your DA. Harvey Dent could be your DA getting involved with Penguin in some capacity, turning into Two-Face along the way and becoming your antagonist. And then we could flesh him out in the series after if you wanted. That's, you know, another topic that I already discussed. But that that's that I think it could work. I think Harvey Dent, I think Harvey Dent, Two-Face, wonderful choice, could easily work in the Reeves verse and in the Batman part two. This next one is someone that has been name dropped somewhat kind of, you know, unintentionally, uh, but not directly. And that's Thomas Elliot Hush. I think Hush is a, a big, big possibility of the Batman part two. Uh, name drop, the name Elliot is name dropped in the Batman and of course Elliot Bridge in the Penguin series. And they really want you to know Elliot Bridge. Penguin goes along and says, Elliot Bridge. They want you to know the name Elliot in this series. Uh, like, you know, you bring in Hush. Uh, my only thing with Hush, of course, is that his, his role would be very similar or could be very similar to what Riddler's role was in the first one. But if you're keeping it grounded in that realm, maybe that's the direction you want to go and you want to have characters and villains like this with ultimately the same, you know, similar type goals. Because, of course, if Court of Owls is your big bad, there would have to be people trying to take out the upper class. Hush is a childhood friend of Bruce Wayne turned jealous psychopath. His vendetta against Bruce combined with his surgical precision and psychological games could tie into Gotham's themes of wealthy disparity and personal vendettas. He could provide a deeply personal conflict for Bruce while delving into his past. And I think what these movies are all about is obviously, you know, Gotham as the villain itself, but also dealing with Bruce Wayne and how Bruce Wayne has to deal with himself and the world around him and trying to figure out who he is and everything connecting back to the Wayne family and hush Thomas Elliot could be a huge impact on Bruce Wayne as a character in the Batman 2 and I think hush is a prime candidate for this series I'm not gonna let this one slide Mad Hatter I always have the Mad Hatter low lever drug dealer do it Matt Reeves just do it also the ventriloquist Scarface Scarface the ventriloquist I would love to see them, the psychological dynamic here, how Batman would have to deal with someone like this. This character is could be portrayed in a grounded fashion, really cool, and in a unique way, and Matt Reeves could have a lot of fun with it. You could really push the boundaries of what is r realistic and what is kind of fantasy with a character like Scarface. How ridiculous can you make it before it's absurd? I think mean, that would be a lot of fun to see how that would play out. And then he could also have a dynamic with Penguin if you wanted and, and, the, and the underworld of Gotham. Arnold Wesker, a timid man who channels his criminal tendencies through a puppet named Scarface, could represent Gotham's fractured psyche. His descent into madness could parallel Bruce's own struggles with duality. He could add a creepy, noir-inspired villain to Gotham's criminal roster. And I'm going to wrap it up with Mr. Freeze, this is the one that has been rumored for quite some time. Matt Reeves, I believe one time or another, said he would love to deal with Mr. Freeze. Is Mr. T. Freeze too fantastical? Can he see beyond it? It reminds me of when somebody asked Christopher Nolan about introducing the Penguin, and he said, I can't do the Penguin. That's too absurd for my world. And I don't think that was the case. And Matt Reeves kind of brought Penguin in and did a really fantastic job with the Penguin. But it didn't work for Christopher Nolan. So does Reeves, does Reeves have Mr. Freeze on the mind? And can Mr. Freeze work in the Reeves verse? And I think that there is a story to be told. I think the fact that we're going into wintertime, that, that the Penguin showrunners, Laura Frank was told, and the cast was told, it has to end in winter. We have to end when it's cold out. That was what they were, that was a mandate from Matt Reeves and from production of the Batman, of the Batman Part Two that it had to be cold out, had to be winter. So all signs based on that lead to Mr. Freeze. 
I know Mr. Freeze has been done in the movies before, and I'd like to see original characters as well, but Batman has such a rich rose gallery, and Mr. Freeze done, let's be honest. The Adam West show from the 60s and Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't uh, exactly appease everybody <laughs> about Mr. Freeze. His story is so tragic, trying to save his wife. You can do so much with that. And again, the familial story of Mr. Freeze could resonate deeply with Bruce Wayne, with Batman, and that can have a big effect on him as he's trying to take down this guy while dealing with everything else in Gotham around him. So those are some villains I think would work perfectly in the Batman part two. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.